Alright, so this video we're going to learn how to solve polynomial equations uh, that aren't um, your typical quadratic or cubic or um, polynomial that you could factor real easily and solve by factoring or use the quadratic formula. Um, these are ones that are pre predominantly third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, uh, or any nth degree polynomial here. And we're going to use the rational zeros theorem to solve these equations. Uh, and then once we get down to a third degree or a second degree, uh, we can employ those tools such as completing the square, uh, the quadratic formula, factoring, uh, grouping, whatever method we want at that point. Um, so first off, we have this equation here. x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 20x minus 12 equals 0. From what we know, our leading coefficient is 1, and our constant term is negative 12. Since our leading coefficient is 1, then we're only ha we only have to list our possible factors of the last term, which is negative 12. Those possible factors are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. Those are our only possible rational factors, rational factors, uh, or rational zeros. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to use synthetic substitution to figure out which ones, which one or ones work, and then we could find a depressed polynomial and solve using that information as well. So let's try our first number here, plus or minus 1. Alright, so if we use positive 1 and do synthetic division with it, we have our coefficients in order 1, 2, negative 7, negative 20, negative 12. Remember, if we, if this, if 1 is a solution, if x equals 1 is a solution, our remainder here should be 0. So to start off, like we always do with synthetic division, bring down a 1, bring down that 1, we get a 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Bring it underneath the 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 20 plus negative 4 is negative 24. 1 times negative 24 is negative 24, and our remainder here is not 0, it's negative 36. So that means x equals 1 is not a solution. Also, notice we didn't need to put any placeholders of 0 in there because we have degree 4, degree 3, degree 2, degree 1 in the constant term. If we didn't have, say, this minus 7x term, and we just went from plus 2x cubed to minus 20x, we would have to put a 0 where this 7 is. Right, so since x equals 1 is not a solution, we, need to, we can eliminate positive 1, and we could try negative 1 and see what happens. So if we have a negative 1 here, we still bring the 1 down, so 1 times negative 1 here is negative 1, 2 plus negative 1 is positive 1, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, Negative 7 minus, or plus negative 1 is negative 8. Negative 1 times negative 8 is a positive 8. Negative 20 plus 8 is a negative 12. Negative 1 times negative 12 is a positive 12. And negative 12 plus 12 is 0. We got a remainder of 0, so x equals 1 is a solution. So our solutions here... Our solutions are x equals 1, or negative 1, right, because we found that 1 doesn't work, so x equals negative 1 works. And now what we can do is we could keep testing each of these values, right? Now this polynomial here with these coefficients, this is a, called a depressed polynomial here. 
So our coefficients are going to be 1x cubed plus 1x squared minus 8x minus 12. And we can solve that equation when it equals 0 using the remaining factors. We established 1, positive 1 is not a factor, so we can't test positive 1 here. We established negative 1 as a factor already, so let's move on to plus or minus 2. Let's go to, per se, um, negative 2 here. Let's go to negative 2 here, and we'll use these um, numbers here. Okay? So let's try, say, negative 2. The, glory thing, the, 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 the glorious thing about this rational zeros theorem is you can kind of pick where you want to start here. Um, in this case, I'm jumping from positive 2 to negative 2 just to try it. You know, we might have to try positive 2 at some point. So let's use negative 2 and use these coefficients here. We got 1, 1, negative 8, negative 12, and in this spot right here we want a 0. So let's bring down this 1. We get 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1, two, negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12. And we get 0. So that means x equals negative 2 is a solution. And now this further depressed polynomial can be written as, remember, this coefficient here is x cubed. This is an x cubed, a cubic one. So this degree here is going to be 1x squared. We have minus 1x minus 6, and that equals 0. From here, we could do more synthetic substitution with some of these values here, but what you should notice here, because this trinomial here, x squared minus x minus 6, is factorable, why not factor it? Make your life a little bit easier. So if we take x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0, factor it. x squared minus x minus 6 factored is x minus 3 times x plus 2. That equals 0. Now using the zero product property, if we have the product of two binomials that are 0, then either of these two uh, binomials is 0. So x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. Add 3, we get x to be 3. Subtract 2, we get negative 2. Notice, we already have negative 2 as a solution. All right? We get x equals negative 2 twice. So when we get that, when we get the solution repeated, say 2 times or 3 times, we say it has multiplicity. It has a multiplicity of 2 in this case, and then x equals 3. To further write our solutions here, we can also write it as x equals negative 1, negative 2, with a multiplicity of 2 and positive 3, and this answer is what we're looking for. Those are all the solutions to this equation here. Now when you get down to something like this, you could also use the quadratic formula um, to, to solve it, um, but in this case factoring is a little bit easier. Hopefully you guys know or remember what the quadratic formula is. Multiple different ta tactics uh, that you can use. Um, so, you might have to go through this list, uh, all of them. You might have to go here to here to here. You might not, you might have to do it eight or, eight or nine times before you get a possible zero, but chances are you'll get one pretty soon. So, you do the same process if we have a fifth degree, sixth degree, seventh degree, um, and just know that if there's a coefficient, a leading coefficient here, you have to take the, the a fraction or a ratio of the factors of the constant to the 
factors of the leading coefficient. You, you might come up with some fractions. And if you do come up with fractions, um, test the one, the integer ones first, because integers are rational. And then if none of them work, use um, do some synthetic substitution with fractions. So um, that's how to solve polynomial equations.